All right, so our next question is probably just going to go into a little bit more detail in that what is really your background? So essentially, what led you to the position that you currently have? Did you do a lot of postdocs? Did you work in industry? Were there periods of unemployment and uncertainty? As likely there are. Um, did you just get the job straight out of your degree, et cetera? So essentially, how did you end up finding your job? Uh, James, you want to lead that off? Sure, yeah. Um... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, I did my undergraduate and master's degree uh, at the University of Auckland. Um, and yeah, there was it's uncertainty was involved afterwards, for sure. That was right. I finished right during the 2008 financial crash. Um, I was working in and out of certain um, industry uh, companies, like in, exp in exploration geology. And then I got a Fulbright um, I was doing that for about four years and I got a Fulbright to work and do my PhD, sorry, uh, at the University of Idaho um, in the US and then I went to a postdoc at Syracuse University in upstate New York um, and I was doing that and I was at the very end I was a research assistant professor there um, after getting a couple of grants. Um, so I was there for about four years before uh, just landing this job here back in back in New Zealand, which I'm pretty happy about. Yeah, what a nice circle. <laughs> Long circle. <laughs> uh, how about um, Mai? Yeah, so I um, did my undergrad at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I actually got an anthropology degree before I discovered geology, so I hung around there for a while. Um, and then I ended up doing my master's at the university that I'm currently at. So this is a very undergraduate heavy university and um, it only grants undergrads and masters. So as a master's student, I got to do quite a lot of teaching here. Um, and that's also when I got a lot of exposure to different analytical um, instruments. And so I, I've always been curious uh, to learn how things work. I think maybe part of it stems from my car breaking down a lot. <laughs> so I just, just wanted to know how, you know, how things work and learn about the instruments and how they operate. And um, that's sort of when I started diving into the um, instrumental side of things. And then I ended up working on my PhD at the University of Auckland. And I think I must have high five James as I passed over because I started this position in January. Um, and... I just got, I think, really lucky in that this, this university actually had the, the person who was at this position leave uh, just a few months before I was finishing my PhD. And so um, I saw, I saw the opening um, and I applied and uh, I got the position. So Yay. I got very lucky in that sense. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Natalie and Talia. Okay, um, so I did my undergrad at the National University of Colombia. That's a very strong field-based geology degree, uh, basically oriented to oil exploration. Back then, now it's, it's changed. Um, so no one talked about me, about volcanoes, <laughs> and I luckily met uh, an excellent mentor who was involved in the Armero tragedy in 1985, and he worked in the Geological Survey of, uh, of Colombia. Uh, and he's been also in, in the La Harz experience of Nevada del Huila and in Galera's eruption. So he pushed me <laughs> to, to study at UNAM in Mexico for my master's and get involved in, in what I love, which is physical volcanology and, and field work, basically. But in between, I worked in the geological survey as well and uh, before going to to Mexico. So uh, my my main training in, in volcanology is the Mexican school at uh, Mexico City. And then I got the mentorship as well of beautiful people, uh, which is basically what has me guide it, it has guided me all the time. So and Jose Luis Macias at Morelia now, and Klaus Sive in Mexico City were the main people training me. And then I came back to Colombia to work in the 
Volcanological Observatory of Manizales. That's the one that is closest to Nevado del Ruiz, which is the one causing the tragedy of Armero in 1985. But we worked in the south, close to Ecuador, and did it, um, a mapping exercise, which was very heavy in very difficult conditions, but then you get to know better the teams working in the field in Colombia. And then uh, Klaus uh, guided me to apply to a PhD in New Zealand. So we're all linked by New Zealand. <laughs> but I was, <laughs> I was based in Palmerston North with, with Shane Cronin in Volcanic Risk Solutions team. So then I also got a, an amazing mentorship from here, from him, and also um, quite guided by Heather Wright at the, um, from the USGS. Back then, uh, she was just um, going back to the US from Australia. And um, I stayed for a postdoc because Tongariro uh, erupted. So it was, it was an opportunity. It, it's a matter of luck if you get an eruption while you're finishing something because you get easily involved in, in the teams. And, um, but I think I, I needed to come back to my crazy jungle and try to keep contributing here because we don't have, so it's an advantage at, at some stage that in, uh, in Latin America, the main schools in volcanology are basically in, in Mexico and now it's getting stronger in Chile. Uh, they have a, a background as well in, in more in the petrological side in Argentina, but in Colombia with all the tragedies that we've got, we didn't have a proper volcanological school. So that's how I ended up applying with that view to start uh, the school. And then I got involved in, as a lecturer in the, here lecturer is not as in New Zealand, it's, it's more like an hour based teaching position only in the National University but then you cannot live from that. It's the, the salary is really, uh, you can't pay um, the rent basically. So I got back to the geological survey, did a geological map, finished the one that I started in 2008. So I finished it now. And uh, that allowed me to, to uh, get, again, get again into the scene because when you leave your country, if you don't keep the connections, it's really hard to, get involved back again, mm. uh, but that helped me a lot. And, and I got uh, the opportunity to apply to the University of Los Andes where they were willing to get out of the um, traditional oil oriented geology and mm. do this interdisciplinary team called geosciences, um, which is, it links environmental people, lots of geophysics, and actually we're very few geologists at the moment. So um, that, is, that is why teaching is very strong. Um, so basically that's the, the long story. <laughs> yeah, that was an odyssey. <laughs> so many career paths. Uh, all right, how about Kiralee? So um, I have a slightly uh, more direct path <laughs> I had. Uh, I did my uh, undergraduate, master's, and PhD all at the same place, which I know is not recommended, but, uh, and I'm not sure I would recommend it to anyone either, but that's how I did it. I was at the University of Geneva in Switzerland, and um, I had the chance to work with um, uh, Mike Dungan, who was my main PhD advisor, um, Olivier Bachmann, and Alain Berghisa, and um, they were great mentors in teaching me not just the science, but also a bit, um, certainly introducing me to a lot of people um, encouraging me, encouraging me to attend as many workshops, um, field trips, or any kinds of interactions I could do. And, uh, and also uh, um, just helping me out with uh, my, my uh, career decisions. Um, then I um, obtained a um, postdoctoral fellowship from the Swiss National Science Foundation. It's a very generous foundation. I'm, I'm a French citizen, but doing my PhD in Switzerland actually um, allowed me to apply for this um, postdoctoral fellowship and I got it. And so I used it to work with Fidel Costa in Singapore and Chris Huber, in, um, who was at the time at Virgil Tech in Atlanta. So I shared my time between both locations. Um, and it was really nice because I got a lot of um, mentorship, but at the same time independence because it was 
um, my so I learned how to write a grant to get that fellowship and um, um, how to manage it to a certain degree. Although it didn't, it just came with salary, not with any um, research funds. Um, and um, after that, I I got lucky. I applied three faculty positions. So I was a not quite two year postdoc. So I applied three faculty positions, got two interviews and one position. So I think that's really lucky. I'm not sure it's always like that. Um, so I just took it and smiled. <laughs> so that's my background. Cool. Thank you. It's fun to see how many differences there are. 